To cheat me, ready to go to school? To cheat me. How are you, Sunny? This is to cheat me, and this is our son, our first son. He's three years old. Like a lot of little boys, Tachitni loves to play. He loves his little brother and the color red. But there are some little boy things that Tachitni doesn't do. He can't yet speak or walk properly, and he doesn't eat. Tachitni gets all his nourishment through a feeding tube. At four months old was when we had a real clue that something was wrong. And when I was uh, breastfeeding him, he suddenly turned opposite of me in a real quick way and he was gasping and he had short breaths. The Chitney was having epileptic seizures, as many as 20 a day. And despite rounds of tests, his doctors didn't know why. Whenever we see a child with seizures, we want to try and establish more than a diagnosis of seizures. We want to know what's causing the seizures. And sometimes it's easy, but there is a large group of children uh, in whom we cannot establish a cause. That's really hard because you have a lot of questions like why? And, and why does it have to be us? The chief walkers didn't find an answer until they found Michael Hammer. Did you write the code to do all this? Yeah. Okay. No, that's good. I mean, that's really good experience. Hammer isn't a medical doctor. He's a geneticist who has spent decades piecing together the history of human evolution by looking for changes or mutations in our DNA. I think I was just motivated by a genuine curiosity of how did this all come to be in terms of being human beings, what are human beings, what, how are we different from other species and our closest living relatives, the great apes. He was really looking at broad-scale issues of, of human history, right? That is when, is, when is the mitochondrial eve, or what are the great migrations of humans across the face of the Earth? Hammer's worldwide hunt for human origins made him well-respected and well-known, but his research took a different focus, one much closer to home, when his daughter was born. Shay was um, apparently a a normal, happy baby girl, um, very cute, but also not quite making her developmental milestones that um, parents typically follow. Then we noticed at about six months or five months that she was having little blinking episodes. Her eyes were blinking several times in a row, uh, multiple times a day. And so we took her to a neurologist and um, he confirmed that she was having um, seizures. As Shay grew older, the seizures took a devastating toll. They would wipe her out for days, and then just back to normal, and then another one, and then she'd be gone again for days. Those were the t bad times, the hard times. And we had really exhausted all the possible avenues of diet and behavior plans. We tried so many different medications. Anything that came up that was new, we would try but there just didn't seem to be anything on the horizon. So I just thought, well, I'm a geneticist. I look at, you know, I work with DNA sequences uh, all the time. That's what I do. Why couldn't I just look for the mutation that caused my daughter's problem? It took months of discussion with collaborators and the ethics review board for Hammer to get permission to test his own family's DNA. Then his team started sifting through the data for clues. In the process of working through the data analysis, um, Shea passed away suddenly. I woke up one morning and she was, she was gone in her bed. She, she passed away in the night. Children with seizures at a higher risk for sudden, sudden death, like SIDS, you know, sudden infant death syndrome. This is called SUDEP, sudden unexplained death in epilepsy. And we didn't realize at the time that she was at this much higher risk for, for SUDEP because she had 
bad seizures for so many years. And now I think people are made aware of these things, um, but at the time it was just a total shock to us. A few days later when I, when I could even have a thought that was, you know, sensible, um, I asked myself, should we continue this analysis? And I waited to get the answer just from the universe, you know, like, and it, it came back, yes. It was, um, I think this is what Shay would want. Just weeks later, Hammer's team found what they were looking for. A single change in one gene had caused all of Shay's difficulties. It was a de novo mutation, a random genetic error that wasn't inherited from her parents, but just happened by chance. I went to Dr. Talwar and said, look, if we could do it for Shay, perhaps we could do this for other children. Do you have 10 other children like Shay in, in your practice that are stumping you? You can't figure out what's causing their epilepsy. Um, and he said, certainly. So he asked families if they would like to participate in our research study. Out of the 10, seven of the patients, seven of the families, we found mutations that were um, either known to be causative or sh led, shed some light on, on new ways that epilepsy could be caused genetically. One of those seven families is Tachitnis, the chief walkers. They learned that a random mutation similar to Shay's caused their son's epilepsy. It gave us comfort knowing that it wasn't something that we did or we didn't do because the genetic mutation is something that we can't control. Now the chief walkers focus on what they can control, nurturing Tachitni's gifts and sharing them with the world. Tachitni is special, and we always knew he was special, but special because he's allowing us to get answers and maybe through him that we can help other children or other people. Uh. If he can go through so much at such a young age and still at the end of the day smile and laugh, it just makes us appreciate life. What you can do is you can give those parents an insight into the life of their child and, and how much it changes their ability to be with their child is, is an amazing thing to think about. And I didn't appreciate the ability that we had to make that kind of gift until I saw it happen several times. So I guess that's Michael's great gift right now, his understanding of what it means and these little things that, that to us seem little things that mean so much to them. The next case is choroid plexus, the brain cancer patient. These days, Hammer is using the techniques he honed in studying the past to help children like Tachitni here and now and in the future. Shay offered her gift when she was here, and she keeps giving her gift now that she's not here in physical form. She revealed the cause of her epilepsy, which is benefiting other children. Um, there are now at least 40 other children who have learned that they have also a mutation in the same gene, SCN8A, that they would not have known about if it weren't for Shay. We're now working on children with cancer and trying to find the genetic causes that make their tumors grow. And we're working on other children who have diseases where we think there's a genetic cause. I'm a lot more introspective about not what makes us human, but what our purpose here is as human beings what does life mean to us? What's important about being alive? Because it's so tenuous, it can just disappear at any moment. And I wanna know the meaning of this life and, and, and Shay's life.